praise and worship. It is so good to be back in Watonga Nazarene. And I know we probably have some people listening online, so we want to welcome you too. And of course, we want to keep Pastor Kaysen and his family in our prayers as they're away for the time being in Florida. I'm glad that he got to get away for a little bit, but we want to remember to keep him in our prayers and that the Lord would continue to protect him and keep him safe. Well, it's not over until God says it's over. Now, it could be during this time of COVID-19 that you've been tempted to think, well, is this it? <laughs> is, is life as I used to know it over? Well, it's not over till God says it's over. Uh, let's talk about a few examples. Annie Clark was born without hands. Yet, as a first grader, uh, she won a penmanship award in the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, how does that happen? If she didn't have hands, how could she win a penmanship award for the whole state of Pennsylvania? I mean, how could she even write? Well, as you can see in the photo, she wedges a pencil between her arms, and that's the same way that she feeds herself and even paints her toenails. Annie is a confident little girl. She even tutors other kids, and she wants to become an author. But she could have given up. I mean, she could have said, okay, this is hopeless. I'll never write. I, I, I'll never be able to feed myself. It's over. It's over. But she didn't. And maybe, again, you're going through a tough time right now where you tend to think, is it over for me? I mean, is life as I once knew it over? It's easy to think that during these times of COVID-19. Maybe some things in your life right now seem hopeless. And maybe you're wondering, well, if things ever get back to normal, my life isn't what it used to be. It's not what I want it to be. Well, guess what? It's not over till God says it's over. And I'm going to keep repeating that a few times uh, this morning because I want that to really burn an image in our mind. Let's look at the encouragement God gives us. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. Here we go. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We're perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do, but we don't give up and quit. We're hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. It's not over till God says it's over. Now there's a prophet in the Old Testament who could have easily thought, well, it's over. His name is Ezekiel. And he started his ministry at age 30, and he was taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar in 597 B.C. Ezekiel's Old Testament book is a fascinating compilation of his messages that span 23 years. And Ezekiel is one of the most colorful prophets in the Bible. He used pantomime, and he used crying, slapping his thighs. He ate a scroll, and he used many dramatic elements to deliver his message and to help his people understand his messages. He was a professional object lesson giver. He was the caliber of speaker that would have been on a TED talk. He was just that good. So let's set the scene. Here it is. For more than a hundred years, God's people, the Israelites, had been in Egyptian captivity. Well, God rescued them and he brought them into the promised land. It was about 60, about 60,000 square miles the promised land was. And so God has rescued them from captivity. It took over 40 years, but he got them into this great section of land called the promised land. 60,000 square miles of wide and vast and fertile land. And then he made them a nation. But after the excitement wore off, they turned against God. Yes, the same God that brought them out of captivity. The same God that had rescued them for over 40 years through the wilderness. Uh, amazingly, their clothes didn't wear out over 40 years. Amazingly, he provided food for them every day, uh, all that they needed. Yes, that God, they turned against that God, our Lord and Savior, Jehovah. The excitement has worn off. They've turned against him. And so this is the condition that Ezekiel is in right now in our 
our story in the Old Testament. So what happened? Well, the excitement worn off. They turned their back against God, and God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian army to invade Israel. They reduced Solomon's temple to ashes, and they had taken many of the Israelites back to Babylon as captives. This is the point of the story that we're in. This is the condition that Ezekiel is in. It's a pitiful condition, isn't it? The nation of Israel is dead. But remember, it's not over till God says it's over. And God has a vision for Ezekiel. Let's look at it. We're in Ezekiel chapter 37. Here we go. God leads Ezekiel to this valley full of old dry bones. Now for Ezekiel, this is a vision of the nation of Israel. Let's look at the scripture, Ezekiel 37, 11. I want you to know God is talking. These bones, God said, these bones represent all the people of Israel. Now remember, these are very dry, old bones. You know what an old, dry bone is? If you pick it up, it pretty much just falls into dust. Okay, so God says, okay, these bones, this is a picture of Israel. These are the people of Israel. They say, we have become a heap of dried out bones. All hope is gone. That, well, that's right. They didn't have any hope. God was their only hope. I mean, there was no way the Israelites could get themselves out of this kind of dried up, dead situation. Out of Babylonian captivity. They can't rescue themselves. They were just like these dead, dry bones scattered over uh, hundreds uh, of miles. So what is Ezekiel seeing right now? He's looking at millions of dead, dry bones scattered across hundreds of square miles. I, I don't know, maybe you see yourself in a valley of no hope. It could be that you see yourself in a valley of dead dry bones as we're in the midst of COVID-19. Let me remind you, it's not over till God says it's over. Okay, well what happens next? Well, God asks Ezekiel a question. Can these bones live? Can they become people again? Now, how would you answer that question? How do you answer that? God is asking, how do you answer? Well, Ezekiel gave a smart answer. He said, only you know, Lord. I can't figure that out. Only you know, Lord. And you may be in a situation that looks hopeless. It could be some people in our congregation here have, have lost a job or even a loved one. Or maybe you're wondering how you will make next month's payment. Or maybe groceries have been hard to come by. Maybe you're in a situation that looks hopeless. You're, you're lost. You're, you're tired of coping. Maybe it looks like it's time to give up. Man may count you out. Victory may look impossible. But it doesn't matter what it looks like because... It's not over till God says it's over. In a California zoo, a mother tiger gave birth to a rare set of triplet tiger cubs. But the cubs were born prematurely and because of their tiny size, they died shortly after birth. And the veterinarians watched as this mother tiger just slipped into a state of depression. And the doctors decided if, if she could nurse other newborn tiger cubs, she'd probably improve. So they checked with zoos all over the nation, and unfortunately, there were no other tiger cubs of the right age to introduce to the depressed mother. Things seemed hopeless. And that's when the veterinarians decided to try something that had never before been done in a zoo environment. The only orphans that could be found quickly were a litter of weanling pigs. So the zookeepers and the vets wrapped those little piglets in tiger fabric and placed the babies around the mother. Yes, they're cute, but the question is, would they be cubs or would they become pork chops? <laughs> Well, it worked. The mama tiger accepted those little piglets as if they were her own. And the piglets loved their new mama. Oh, what a happy family. <laughs> God can turn around any situation. 
Let's get back to Ezekiel. Now, dry bones are as dead as you can get. I mean, you can't bring life back to a bunch of disjointed dry bones. There's no humanly way possible. I mean, this is long dead. The body is not just dead. The body is long dead. It's gone. And notice, God makes it a point here to tell Ezekiel these bones are very dry. In other words, they've been dead a long, long time. There's no body to be found. It's just hundreds of square miles of very dry, very old, very dead bones. Well, it's one thing to believe in God for a miracle to heal the sick or maybe even raise a person from the dead. We remember that Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead, don't we? Yeah, and, and by using God's power, Peter brought Tabitha back to life. We remember Paul raised Eutychus from the dead after he fell out of that high story window and Paul was speaking on and on and on and some of you are saying yeah kind of like you Susie on and on. <laughs> so God can raise a dead person but this is beyond dead I mean these bones are no longer people they're just bones there's no hope from a human standpoint you can't bring life to very dead very dry very old bones well, there are times when these old, dead, dry bones represent us. We find ourselves with no hope. We just assume it's over. Well, there is hope. Let's look at Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, and 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 you, will carry it on to completion. Will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen to that. So we may feel as though we've lost. But remember, say it with me, will you? It's not over till God says it's over. Okay, so here we are with Ezekiel. He's in a huge valley that stretches for hundreds of square miles. And it's full of old dry bones. And God tells him to do something well, kind of different. God says, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to these bones. Now, it's one thing to prophesy to people who can listen, give you a little feedback, but prophesy to a bunch of old, dead, dry bones? We tend to think of prophecy as fortune-telling. Really, <laughs> you know, predicting the future. Prophecy is really simply repeating what God has told you to say. And the Bible is full of prophets, people to whom God gave a specific message, and then they in turn would give God's specific message to the people. And sometimes those messages were about God's judgment. Sometimes they were about God's love, His redemption, His warnings, His desire to make them whole. So as a prophet, God is telling Ezekiel to speak the message that He has given him, not to a people, but to a field full of dry bones. So let's see what happens. Now you won't be able to understand the narration because it's in Hebrew, but you'll get a, you'll get a, a feel for what may have happened. <clears throat>
you glad that we had a videographer back then to capture all that on film <laughs> so we could see it? But that kind of gives you an idea of how that could have gone down. And as soon as Ezekiel begins to prophesy or to speak God's message to those bones, the bones click, 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 snap, 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 start coming together. Well, when you start speaking God's word, your situation will be different. The situation may change or God may choose to change you. But God's word always makes a difference. So start speaking God's word into your situation. And remember, it's not over till God says it's over. Over Jarius, you remember him in the New Testament thought it was over. His daughter was dead, but God hadn't said it was over. And Jesus raised that little girl from the dead. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he'd been there for 38 years. He was paralyzed. He couldn't make it into the pool. Everybody else beat him there. He thought, my life is surely over. I'll never get out of here. But hey, God hadn't said it was over. And Jesus healed him. Everyone thought it was over for Daniel. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'm being thrown into a, into a den of, of lions that salivate for human blood. It's got to be, no, 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 God hasn't said it's over. Everybody else thought it was over for Daniel, but Daniel knew God hadn't said it was over. King Nebuchadnezzar thought surely it will be over for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but God hadn't said it was over. Abraham and Sarah from the Old Testament thought it was over. They'd never have a child. He was, in her, he was in his 90s. She was no spring chicken. She was in her 80s. This is it. It's over. No, it's not over. God hasn't said it's over. And they had a son, Isaac, who fathered the nation of Israel. You may think it's over, but take courage in this fact. 1 Peter 5.10, after you have suffered a little while, our God who is full of kindness through Christ, will give you His eternal glory. I love this. He personally will come and pick you up and set you firmly in place and make you stronger than ever. I don't know what the future holds, but I say with complete confidence, I know who holds my future. Let's get back to Ezekiel. Let's take another look at the miracle God performed in bringing dead bones to life. This time it's in English, so you'll be able to understand the scripture. Let's take a look. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the voice of the Lord. I will make breath into you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, and say to it, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Amen. Things may look hopeless. What can, what can happen with a valley full of old dry bones? Well, that valley of old dry bones can become a great army when God breathes his life and his power into them. So you may think it's over, but it's not over till God says it's over. You see, God wants to bring new life to you, to each one of us. And he yearns to fill you once again with his peace, with his vision, and with his purpose. Well, okay, Susie, wait a minute. I like that. But I'm just not sure I understand this whole dry bones thing. Okay, well, let's take a look at how God explained it to Ezekiel. We're in Ezekiel 37, 11 to 14. These bones, God said, 
represent all the people of Israel. They say, we have become a heap of dried out bones. All hope is gone. Again, maybe you can resonate. But tell them, the Lord God says, my people, I will cause you to rise again and return to the land of Israel. And then at last, oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit into you, and you shall live and return home again to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have done just what I promised you. God brought life from death, and that's something only God can do. Well, guess what? He wants to do the very same thing with you. He wants to give you life and hope and strength and peace and vision and encouragement. Let's go back to Scripture, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now, the Lord who created you, O Israel, says, Don't be afraid. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid. Why? Why shouldn't we be afraid? Because I've ransomed you. And I call you by your name. I don't say, you in the green shirt, you in the blue shirt, you with the cute mask on. No, I call you by your name. You are mine. And when you go through deep waters like COVID-19, when you go through deep waters of job insecurity and terrorist threats upon our nation, when you go through deep waters of financial difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Wow! You know what that means? It means a marriage can be healed. It means a family can come back together. A church can reunite. A business can be rescued. A dream can come back into focus. Hope can return. How? Because say it with me, okay? It's not over till God says it's over. Now, we, we believe in the God who does immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Let's look at Scripture, Ephesians 3.20. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we would ask or imagine according to His power at work within us. I, I know you want to believe that. I know that's your desire. Sounds good, Susie. I want to believe that. Yes, I want that. But sometimes you just don't see immeasurably more in your own life. But the fact is, God wants to do immeasurably more in your life and through your life than you could ever ask Him. More than you can even imagine. Wow, that's good news this morning. That is great news on July 12th. Man, God's vision is always bigger than your own. When Walt Disney World in Orlando opened in 1974, Mrs. Disney was sitting next to the news anchor Walter Cronkite. Walt Disney had died a few years earlier. And Cronkite leaned over to Mrs. Disney and he said, wouldn't it be great if Walt were here to see this today? And Mrs. Disney replied, if Walt had not first seen this, you wouldn't be seeing it today. God has a vision for you. And with God, valleys of dry bones become armies of righteousness. The perishable become imperishable. The dead come to life. There's nothing God can't do. When you say a situation or a person is hopeless, you're just slamming the door in the face of God because there are no hopeless situations. So keep fighting, keep praying, keep fasting, keep pressing, keep progressing, keep moving forward, keep reading, keep interceding, keep believing, keep trusting, keep trying, keep travailing, keep living, giving, moving, going. The victory is coming. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow, not just so that you may have hope, 
but that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this morning as we wrap this up, I'm just wondering, is there anybody here and online who needs some hope right now? Anybody here who's facing a dry bone situation in your life? I'm wondering, what do you want to ask God to do in your life that no one else can do except Him? Let me repeat that. What do you want to ask God to do in your life that no one else can do except Him? Now is a perfect time to do that. Do you want to be renewed with God's Spirit? Is there a dream that's died in your life? Have you given up on something that you used to know was God's plan for your life, but you're not so sure now? Well, God wants to speak to you right here, right now, today. He wants to revive that plan in your life. And He wants to create an army of righteousness out of your bones of despair. So don't stay in the valley of dry bones. Because this morning, on July 12, 2020, it is resurrection time. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you. He wants to resurrect hope. He wants to resurrect his vision in your life. So what do we do when we're in a valley of dry bones? We look to God and we press on. I'm going to play a music video for you. And as I do... This is your altar call commitment time, but I'm not going to open the altar because of safety and social distancing. But I want you to have your own private altar where you are. And as this song plays, would you ask God to do in your life what you need Him to do, and you know only He can do it. And will you ask Him to give you the strength to press on? And I'll come back and close in prayer.
it is not over till God says it's over. Let's pray. Father, we need your strength. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to press on. That's what we want. Jesus, we may have felt in the last few months that things are over. Will things ever get back to normal? We may have questioned a lot of things. But Father, this morning we know it's not over until you say it's over. So Jesus, this morning we ask that you bring new life back into our bones, back into our hearts, back into our minds and our souls. We ask, Lord, in your power that we move forward with your vision, that we keep pressing in, we keep reading, we keep praying, we keep believing, we keep trusting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have in store for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's remember to pray for Pastor Kaysen. Again, as he is away, we want to keep him and his family in prayer. Thank you so much for inviting me back and letting me be a part of your congregation this morning. I love you guys. I love this church. I always enjoy coming to Watonga. Thank you.